Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and we're starting this week off with a bonus episode of the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. So let's get right into it. So I've been out of the office for a couple weeks between SHOT Show uh, and right after that. So we got a lot of new knives to kind of catch up on. So two episodes this week. We're going to have one today and one on our normally scheduled Thursday day as well. And there's plenty to fill these episodes up. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, some new exclusives, three new exclusives that came in while, we, while I was away that we now have to talk about, or now get to talk about, I should say. Uh, first is a restock of this knife right here, the Shiragorov F95NL knife center exclusive very expensive knife comes in about 700 bucks but super super premium the build quality is impeccable and for the folks out there who have the sentiment where they wish chris reeve would make a flipper this is the brand i tell people to check out obviously the vibe is not perfectly one-to-one -one. we've got you know a flat ground blade here whereas uh, the chris reeve knives are always hollow ground or i think always most of the time anyway. So slightly different vibes, but when you're talking about just the superlative quality and the build tolerances, this is where you should look. In fact, Chris Reeve and Shiragorb have done some collaborations as well. That tells you something right there. Uh, but this guy right here, blade length just under four inches, L Max steel, full flat ground, like I mentioned, very distinctive shape that uh, the Shiro models kind of share. A little bit on the thicker side, so you've got some strength back there. This is not going to be like a, uh, a razor-thin scalpel type of knife, but you're still going to get some pretty good slicing. The frame is titanium. We've got a pretty clean build. Two uh, pieces of connection hardware, essentially. You've got the pivot and a single screw there at the back holding things together, but it doesn't feel weak at all. This is solid, you know, solid hardware that they're using. Milled pocket clip frame lock there on the back and black and orange micarta inlays for this knife center exclusive that look very good i think as far as the flipping action we've got their single row bearing system in the pivot right here and snappy 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 action snappy 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 snap into a shiro uh, real soon because they are truly impressive when you put them in your hand uh, next up probably even bigger news for most folks an exclusive version of the andrew demko ad 20.5 four different colors right now so if you've been waiting for something other than the gray we've got you covered we've got a red black orange We'll make sure Thomas gets a good shot of these all together. Gonna have to. <laughs> and we're calling this flat dark earth on the website, but it's more of kind of a, an interesting green color. Um, I don't know. What would you guys call that particular color out there? Reverse Tanto. Reverse Tanto is not a color, Thomas. It is now. You could at least have said like cheese knife for the orange one because it's kind of cheddar. Anyway. The other thing, apart from the colors, that's not the only news with these guys. Different blade steel than the gray handled Aus 10 versions. We've got D2 steel on these bad boys. Not just any D2 either. This is the uh, Austrian made K110, whereas D2 is kind of the specification. K110 is, you know, this Austrian firm's brand name for their D2. And this is a foundry that does really good work with this particular steel. And they, they put their name behind it essentially so one more thing that can help you trust it really nice we've got the clip point blade shape right now we at the moment we don't have the shark's foot but i believe those are coming at some point don't quote me on that if that doesn't happen uh, but i believe we are expecting those about three and a quarter inches long on the blade for these clip point versions right here stone wash finish that's going to help you a little bit with you know corrosion resistance since d2 is only semi stainless but of course if you're unfamiliar with this model from Andrew Demko. This is what it's all about right here, that shark lock system. It is essentially a bar you pull back on the spine and allows the blade to float very freely. Not quite free swinging, maybe use a little bit of oil on this one, 
but you can do the centrifugal motion. You've got a thumb slot as well as thumb studs to do the opening. You can of, cl of course close it much more deliberately if you don't want to go, you know, swinging things wildly. Really cool, really strong. That little tab stays out of the way. It acts as a little bit of a finger guard or a finger, uh, sorry, thumb ramp when you're holding it in the standard position here. And then when you go to choke up, my finger at least kind of sits right in front of it. You can feel the tip of it, but when you're doing the detail stuff like this, it's not getting in the way if that's what you're worried about. Really cool knives. They carry nice and slim too, but you've got the uh, dual liners and that strong lock behind it, which is a very, very nice. I guess the last thing I should mention on these knives that I haven't yet, besides holding up the uh, the cheese flavored one right here, uh, price same as the original versions. We're just at about 150 bucks for these guys. So you're not gonna have to pay extra to get some of these features that some folks have been waiting for. All right, next up, the last exclusive for this week is the Benchmade Griptilian, the long serving backbone of the Benchmade lineup in not just a red color here on the uh, injection molded handle scales, but 20 CV blade steel on these guys right here. Now we didn't know this was gonna wind up happening when we uh, initiated this project with Benchmade, but you used to be able to get the 20 CV blades on the upgraded G10 versions of this knife, but they've actually discontinued those G10 models. So if you're looking for the Griptilian with an upgraded blade steel, Pretty sure this is the only game in town right now anyway. And the advantage of it not being the G10 in this case is the prices are really good. We're about 150 for the satin version versus like 126 for uh, the standard S30V version and 160 for the black Cerakote finish. Really, really cool. Now for the folks who missed the, uh, the G10 handled versions, I definitely get it. I will say this though, I own, even to this day, I own both standard versions as well as G10 versions of the Griptilian in my collection. And while the G10 certainly feels a little bit more premium, the actual shape and the contours in the hand on these injection molded versions, because they are different shapes, is, let's be honest, a little bit better than the G10. It fills the hand quite nicely, helps this fill a role that's gonna do everything from just EDC to outdoor to tactical, all in one really nice package. Three and a half inches on the blade length there, just under three and a half inches. Nice sharp edge. The red on the injection molded scales there. Standard black oxide finished pocket clip. And of course, the axis lock. So you can do that flick thing. So one of the things I really appreciate about the axis lock and other lock systems allow you to do this as well, such as the Demco we just looked at, is when you go to close it, there's kind of a, a passive degree of safety built in that other locks like a liner lock or a frame lock just don't have because your fingers never cross the cutting path of the blade at any point when you're disengaging that lock. So if adrenaline's high or if you're just moving pretty fast and you might not be thinking about it as much as you maybe should, your finger's never in the way. So less of a chance of an accident right there, which is a pretty cool thing indeed. And one more, or actually two more uh, knives that allow you to do this as well. Uh, we've got two new SOG knives in their LTE XR line. The first is the Vision XR LTE, uh, coming in about 175 bucks. Now the XR in that name refers to the XR lock, which is SOG's version of the crossbar lock, their Axis competitor. The LTE comes into play because the liners, which used to be metal, have now been made on these models with carbon fiber. And you can see that a little bit when you peek inside the knife. Now, because you've got you know, the rigidity of something like carbon fiber, you've still got strength there, but you've removed some of the weight from the steel that used to be there. And as a result, I mean, this is a, a three, almost 3.4 inch blade on this knife and the weight comes in uh, about 3.4 ounces. And actually that's kind of surprising. Um, because it doesn't even feel that heavy. And it might just be the fact that it is as large as it is, it, you expect it to be heavier, but it really isn't. I mean, it's, it's quite light feeling. Still feels solid, but it is definitely not gonna weigh you down. Uh, like I mentioned, 3.4 inches on the blade, CTS XHP, 
steel, really good performer there. And we've got a graphite titanium nitride coating with the black G10 on the handles. Three ways to kind of open this knife. You've got the centrifugal wrist flick, like we've been showing. You've got the thumb studs right there, and you've got a flipper tab. And Saga were only, I think the only guys right now doing a flipper tab on a crossbar lock. It's, it's actually a little harder to do than you might think because you can't have a detent in the same way you could with something like that Shirogorov, which has a pretty strong detent, as you can see. But Saga is doing it pretty well. As far as carry, you've got a folded over pocket clip, reversible for either side, which is nice because that lock is also completely ambidextrous. And they didn't go with a, a completely deep carry clip on this guy or the next knife we're going to look at because these are, you know, tactical knives or in tactically intended knives. So you want to be able to actually access the knife from your pocket pretty quickly without having to fumble. And sometimes a deep carry clip can kind of get in the way of that. All right, next up we have the Pentagon XR LTE. Same bullet points as the Vision, uh, but we've got slightly bigger blade here, 3.6 inches. Uh, we're coming in just under 200 bucks on this guy. A little bit more work involved on the blade on this one, uh, XHP steel again, but in addition to having a dagger grind where you're, you're beveled back towards the spine as well, there's actually also just a hint, a hint of sharpened edge on the rear of the knife right here at the tip. You can see the, uh, you know, where the, the glint stops back up here, not a sharpened edge. You probably could do it if you wanted to, but this little bit right here is going to give you that little bit of an extra edge on uh, on piercing tasks when you need that sort of thing. I'd probably, you know, personally, I'd prefer to keep this without an edge anyway, because if you need to choke up and do any kind of detail work, you can index your fingers on the spine really easily for a little bit more control. Now, to paraphrase Henry Ford, you can have this knife in any color you want, as long as it's blue. Actually, I should have said that about the vision since the quote originally said black, and this is a black handle knife. But. Eh, he's rusty. Much like Ford's. Oh, fighting words. <laughs> I have two of them, so. It's, that's true. Tell me what you think of that down in the comments, folks. <laughs> You're in for it now, Thomas. Yeah. Um, back to the knife. Cool knife. Uh, very bright color. It's a design I've, uh, I've been a fan of since they came out with the originals. Lighter weight still, like I mentioned, were, uh, man, this one says 4.9 ounces. It does not feel that heavy at all. Yeah, I guess it feels a little bit more heavy than the Vision, but I don't know, man. It, it doesn't feel like it's as much as our uh, our spec sheet says. I mean, this thing is going to be very easy to carry, very easy to use in a lot of different grips, thanks to that neutral handle shape. You've just got kind of one big carve out here for a little bit more of a finger guard there. It's a really cool knife. Even if you're not into kind of the tactical vibes of this uh, this style, this type of grind on a knife actually works really well in any kind of thing you're, you're moving through material at an angle works great on cardboard because you've removed a ton of drag behind the actual ground portion of the blade right there. Really cool feature for your next utility knife too. All right, let's keep the, uh, keep looking at some tactical things here. We've got a lot of new Protex in stock right now. I just pulled one. This is one of the godsons we've currently got. Uh, comes in about 275 for this guy with a really cool leather inlay on the aluminum frame. Not something you see too often, and they've joined it up with a, uh, a leather fob. Again, not something that often comes out of the box on a Protec knife. Godson, of course, great design. It's sort of a modern minimalist take on the classic Italian stiletto. You can kind of see the uh, suggestions of that shape there without getting into the, uh, the full you know, curly cues on the quillion there. If you do like that, they've got the uh, Protec has the Don model which more closely mimics kind of the classics. I really like the minimalist take on these guys right here. Really nice action. It's a Protec after all, blade length just over three inches, 154 cm steel on this particular one, and that deep carry pocket clip right there. But again, just one of many new Protecs right now in stock. So we'll leave a link to the whole brand down below. Check them all out. We've also got a lot of new Microtech in the building right now too. And I decided to pull one of the smaller guys right here, just cause you know, we like to look at the, uh, the big stuff all the time. This guy makes me smile. This is the Troodon mini uh, OTF comes in uh, 336 for this version right here. Comes with the bronze apocalyptic finish on the blade and hardware. 
double edged in this case this is not just a suggested uh, double edge it is actually double edged and the steel on this one is m390 as well really nice tight little package here blade length just under two inches just because it's small doesn't mean it doesn't have that great microtech action as well microtech action protech action a lot of good actions going on right here deep carry pocket clip which can be reversed for left or right carry and you got the uh, the tungsten glass breaker there at the end man just a sweet sweet little knife all right next up uh, is a Chavez the Ultramar Redencion Street uh, and this is one of those knives where we don't have a ton of quantity left um, we did earlier while I was out of the office uh, so I still wanted to show it but if this is sold out by the time the video comes out I do apologize like I said we only have a, uh, a handful left right now uh, but this is the drop point blade there's also a Tonto available uh, price on these about 320 bucks three and a quarter inch blade M390 steel and the uh, build quality these are made by Riot so you know they're really really well put together compound grinds you've got the hollow grind at the back for a thinner edge uh, behind the actual sharpened edge itself and flat ground at the tip for a bit more strength kind of cribs uh, cribs that from you know most Western style Tantas but they did it on a drop point shape which I certainly appreciate two pocket clips you can run it with the uh, the standard skull here at the back or uh, you can get it or it also comes with a more subtle pocket clip if you'd rather not have the uh, the big old skull pocket at, or peeking out from your pocket frame lock really really tight uh, cut lines for the lock bar right there I've always appreciated that about these Chavez models so it just feels super premium and the flipping action takes a little bit of getting used to versus some others right there but when you get it man it is oh so satisfying the whole thing really is pretty satisfying if you're looking for a knife that's not huge but you still want something that's kind of overbuilt has a lot of kind of meat behind its bones a lot of toughness definitely a knife worth checking out more tactical stuff let's keep going let's keep going uh, a couple new things here from tour knives uh, that aren't knives in this case but we've got a couple of white finished EDC items we've got a Marlin spike right here it comes in about 75 bucks uh, has that really distinctive finish going on and in addition to using it as a marlin spike for the knot untying all kinds of uses for a spike you can use it as an ice pick certainly a self-defense tool you've got a space here with a lanyard at, or uh, a space cut out for a lanyard at the back so you can add something there if you want uh, carrying this knife is going to be quite easy thanks to the leather pocket slip right there you can slide it into your pocket if you like but you've also got some rivets along the side where you can attach something like a tech lock that'll work perfectly well with this so you can carry it on your belt instead if you wish really nicely put together the leather is nice and thick has a very good kind of old world vibe to it just very nice all right next up and even more solidly in the kind of self-defense tool category is the Tor knives Thor's hammer push dagger comes in about 95 bucks on this guy and we say push dagger but this is not really a cutting knife I mean there are apexes on here but they're not sharp you can see this is basically just a big wedge a big spike big little spike you know it's not massive but there's kind of a brutalist quality to it in a way very uh, very effective if you had to use this in an hour of need for sure it's thick enough that it's it doesn't feel like it's going to kind of twist away on you feels really solid in that grip you could probably open some boxes with that tip if you needed to just kind of break through some tape but that's not what this is for let's be honest as far as carry got a kydex sheath involved with a snap across and this is actually a pull the dot snap which means it's not going to come loose on you when you don't want it in fact it can sometimes be a little tricky to put back if you don't have the angle just right because that's because these are designed not to come undone except in that one angle so very unlikely for it to pop loose and have you lose it on yourself you could also carry it around your neck in addition to being able to use this small loop here as a uh, a belt pass through if you wanted to carry this kind of inside the waistband or something like this something like that would be very effective all right next up we've got a custom fixed blade from Williams blade design 
This is the uh, Shobu Zukuri Kaiken fixed blade. Uh, 475 bucks for this being, you know, a handmade knife. I believe this is a handmade knife anyway. Uh, four and a half inch blade M390 steel with their apocalyptic finish going on. Kind of suggests a, uh, a Hamon line, but this is not a, a traditionally tempered knife. So it's not an actual kind of clay line from a Hamon, but it looks really awesome. Really aggressive uh, trailing point shape, natural micarta handles, very aggressive uh, kind of notches on the edges of these guys. Not designed for comfort, designed to keep it from slipping at all costs from your hands in use. And it's certainly gonna be pretty effective at that, even if you're wearing gloves. These are big enough, they're still gonna kind of grab onto a gloved material there as well. The sheath itself is Kydex, snaps in really nice, as you can see. Uh, gonna carry pretty easily thanks to this horizontal belt loop. Carry this cross draw or smaller your back, no problem. Although smaller your back might be I don't like how it's tipping down there a little bit. Eh, we can move it. That's the advantage. Uh, you can also uh, fit a large tech lock to one of these if you take that loop off. You want to carry that a little bit differently. So you can carry things, you know, inverted, side to side, or up and down. Any which way you please. But really nicely put together. If you don't have 475 bucks uh, for this design, believe me, I feel your pain. How about uh, 115 bucks instead? We've got... A bigger version of this knife from CRKT, newly released this year. Uh, it's the same design, just a little bit bigger. The blade length on this CRKT version comes in at six and a half inches. You've got SK5 carbon steel, so it's not going to hold an edge like the M390 will, but it's going to be tougher if you're really pushing on this knife. And you do have a coating here to help keep uh, corrosion at bay because, of course, this is a non-stainless steel. Same vibes on the handle. We've got black G10 on this one and those aggressive notches for absolutely a ton of traction. What's it called? This is called the HZ6 or HZ6 for our uh, European or uh, UK viewers out there. The sheath on this guy is Bolteron, which essentially is the, uh, the same thing as Kydex, at least in terms of how you're going to use it. Uh, it does come with a hook here to attach the knife to your belt. This will definitely work inside the waistband if that's your thing. If you've got a waistband or waist big enough to accommodate a big blade like this. Uh, also work if you have big pockets like Jinkos, if those are going to come back in style. Of course, you could certainly do your tech lock thing on this guy as well. All right, next up. I kind of showed you mine on one of these over the uh, the weekend on our Knife AQ, but we still have a couple of M18s left in stock from TM Hunt. As of the morning, we're filming this. Um, fairly expensive knife, 550 bucks uh, for the standard versions, but you've got so much power in these blades and a lot of the cost in there does go into kind of the handmade nature of these guys. Super, super awesome knives. 10 inches long on the blade, 01 steel, quarter inch thick, and it may look a little funky, but there is so much versatility in this knife. We actually did a video uh, kind of torture testing one of these a while back. You've got a leading edge you can chisel with. You've got a strong convex ground section here at the front you could chop with. You've got a recurve section here at the back with a hollow grind that works well as a draw knife, does a pretty good job at smaller detail stuff as well. And then this leading section up here, people don't believe it, but I've actually seen someone quarter and skin a deer with one of these. Put your hand up through the lanyard so it supports the weight on your arm, grip the eye right there, and then you can really easily use this belly for some more delicate tasks. If you're looking for a one-tool option survival knife, you could certainly do a lot worse than this guy right here. I can't say enough good things about the M18. I really can't. And we're really happy to have a few in stock still, at least right now. So don't wait too long if you, uh, if you haven't gotten one of these yet and you're interested. Really comfortable. I really like the details like the crown spine up here on the leading section. That's going to be real kind if you need to baton with this knife or if you're using it for a draw knife. No sharp edges there to kind of pinch you as you're, as you're working. And then a really nice kydex sheath to go along with this keep things nice and tidy when you're heading out all right we looked at exclusives we looked at tactical stuff 
We looked at a tactical crossover outdoor big old chopper. How about some just good old plain EDC stuff? Uh, we sell those? We do. There's, there's a lot of good stuff here for EDC, but slightly more specialized. Uh, let's take a look. A couple new knives from Wii and Civivi that were released last week. We've got the Wii Subjugator. Uh, premium knife, 225 bucks, 20 CV steel, about three and a half inches on the blade. Really nice drop point with that high flat grind. Titanium frame lock flipper, like a lot of the Wii stuff out there, because they happen to do that sort of thing really, really well. You've also got thumb studs there if you'd rather not flip it, but flipping it works great, thanks to the ball bearings there. Titanium pocket clip, one of the few uh, kind of folded titanium clips out there. A lot of titanium clips wind up being, you know, a single piece sculpted out of a, a block of material. So a little bit different there. You can still anodize it your own colors if you want, but this stonewash blue frame happens to look really nice, I think. Other colors are certainly available too. We've got uh, carbon fiber inlaid versions, other colors of titanium if you'd rather not go with the blue. Now, if you like that blade shape though, but you'd rather not spend quite that much money, uh, check out the new Altus button lock. A little bit smaller, but kind of the same vibe on the uh, blade itself. There are G10 versions. There is a Micarta version with a Damascus blade, and there's this really nice Gaborsha wood version right here. Blade length itself, just under three inches. We've got a Nitro V blade steel here. Really good choice. Uh, 72 bucks for the, uh, the least expensive G10 version, and this one right here, 76.50 for this nice wood version. No flipper, but you've got a really nice button lock right there. You don't even really miss the flipper. You can push that button in, do that little flick. Again, another lock that lets you keep the, uh, the fingers out of the blade path. Really like that. You do have thumb studs, so you can pop it open, or of course, be a little more deliberate, whichever you prefer. Pocket clip is deep carry. Steel pocket clip here, not titanium, and it is reversible as well, which is nice because even though the button lock is not a completely ambidextrous design, it's not symmetrical, I should say, from one side to the other, still really easy to use left-handed with very, very little in the way of compromise. Next up, we've got new, more premium versions of the Knox flipper. Uh, previously, you can get them in just a, a plain stainless steel handle for about 64 bucks. Uh, G10, I think, also available for 65 bucks. Uh, we've also got now a shredded, or is that shredded or marbled? More of a marbled carbon fiber front scale for about 89 bucks right now. Still stainless steel frame lock on the back. Still have that deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible. And this carbon fiber version pairs with a Damascus blade just under that three inch mark. Really nice steel. I really like the, uh, the kind of aggressive striations they get in terms of the way they treat this steel. And they're using uh, a 9CR series stainless as their base metal. So you've still got pretty decent performance, not sacrificing too much for the good looks of that Damascus. Feels pretty good in the hand, kind of a three and a half finger grip for me. Comfortable on the front, you've got that nice, a little bit of rounding, you're flat on the back, but the edges are all knocked off so it carries really nicely. Folds up really nicely, ball bearings in the pivot so it flips really nicely too, really cool. The uh, big sharpening choil here at the back isn't really big enough to be called a finger choil. You could maybe get a fingertip up there right on front of the flipper tab if you're doing some detail work, but you're really not getting up into that choil at this point. Hollow ground blade. Previous two we looked at were flat ground. Just really cool. All right, last but not least, we have a few slip joints to look at. The first is from Case, and it's another version of this year's 2021 Tony Bowes pattern, uh, the HT Trapper. So nice. These things are just so good, you guys. Uh, they are about 568 bucks, 567. Uh, so it's definitely more premium than most case knives out there. But when it comes to the real pinnacle of kind of factory made slip joints, I don't know if it gets really much better than this, if at all. They're super nice. Everything is finished super flush. Uh, what are the steel on this guy? I believe they're 154 CM. Uh, yes, they are. And of course the trapper pattern you get 
the big kind of California clip point as well as a long spay blade. Super nice, the edges are good. The grinds are perfect. What can I say? They're so, so good. Uh, def definitely you can get some other versions than just this of the, uh, the Tony Bowes Trapper here. You've got a peach seed jigged bone on this one. I think he likes it. Some, th this, is the, this is your clue. Sometimes when I, I just don't know what to say about a thing, it's either because I really like it or I really don't like it. But chances are, if there's, if there's things I really can't say a nice thing about, it probably didn't wind up on the table anyway. I really, really like these knives very much. Uh, but again, if you don't have the money to spend on one of these, I do have another option for you. Go with one of the standard case trappers. They're still put together really well. Definitely not as well. You're definitely paying uh, or getting what you pay for with the other guy. But check out this new Aqua Cura Knight version of the standard trapper uh, in their sparks series actually because we've got a little bit of uh, sparkly bits in the case shield right there 63 bucks for this guy you still have the same two essentially the same two blade shapes uh, hollow ground instead of flat ground like on the tony bows and with 420 hc or that might have i forget if they're using 420 hc nowadays but it's their case is true sharp stainless it's it's fairly basic stuff but it works pretty well You've got the spay blade and you've got the clip point here is a little bit more of like a muskrat clip point as opposed to the California clip point. Splitting hairs a little bit here, of course, but what would the fun be if we weren't splitting hairs after all? Really like Kiranite as a material in general. It's kind of got a poured acrylic look. Looks really cool and actually feels good if you're actually working the knife. If you're sweaty, things get a little wet. It doesn't get real slippery. It's a really nice material overall. Now, if you like the idea of a, uh, of a slip joint, you don't want to deal with a lock, but you want something a little more modern, new versions of the James brand Elko, about 60 bucks or 59 bucks for these guys. Sub two inch blade, we're like one and three quarters. You've got Sandvix 12C28 stainless steel, or sorry, 12C27. Really nice stuff, full flat grind, good action. You can see the, uh, the walk and talk there. There's a nice half stop along the way. Opens real easily because you've got a blade pass through as opposed to just a nail nick. So it's real easy to get your nail in there. Get that blade open. G10 for the handles and a little bit of a, a pry tip there at the end. You can use it just to attach to your key ring if you want, but if you're not doing that, you've got a little bit of prying and even a little bit of flathead utility uh, for turning certain screws with that thing right there. Really cool and a few different colors available right now as well. Make a great keychain or fifth pocket knife for sure. All right, this is the part where I usually say this is all we've got this week. But as I said, this is just part one of our new Knives of the Week videos. We've got another one coming in just a couple of days. So if you didn't see what you were looking for here, stick around a couple more days. But in the meantime, let me know what you thought of these knives down in the comments and to get your hands on them. We've got links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there so you can earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you buy one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time. With more new knives. With more new knives.